Um, good morning, everyone. I'm going to be presenting a paper on soft tissue tumors. Soft tissue pathologies encompass a wide a spectrum of entities. Patients often present with non-specific clinical findings, such as ill-defined soft tissue swelling or discrete palpable mass with or without accompanying tenderness or pain. With equivocal clinical findings, Imaging can confirm the presence of top soft tissue lesion. The objectives of imaging evaluation are detecting the suspected lesion, establishing a diagnosis, or formulating a differential diagnosis and radiological staging if the lesion is neoplastic. The WHO classification of soft tissue tumors. The soft tissue tumors are divided according to uh, from where they originate and which soft tissue they originate from. They could be adipocytic, fibroblastic or myofibroblastic, um, so-called fibrohistocytic, intermediate type from the smooth muscles. They could originate from the skeletal muscle. They could have vascular origin, chondroosseous, or they could be of uncertain differentiation. The most common examples of adipocytic tumors are lipoma, lipomatosis, lipomatosis of nerves, malignant variety being liposarcoma, benign fibroblastic tumors being nodular fasciitis, myositis ossificans, and the malignant being adult fibrosarcomas or mixofibrosarcomas, so-called fibrohistocytic, benign tumors like GCT of the tendon sheet and malignant like pleomorphic fibrous histocytoma. Arising from the smooth muscle, benign tumors are like angiol uh, lyomyoma, malignant like leomyosarcoma, skeletal muscles, benign being rhabdomyoma and malignant being rhabdomyosarcoma, vascular of vascular origin, benign tumors being like hemangioma and malignant being epithelioid hemangioendotheliomas, chondroosseous, soft tissue chondromas, uh, and of uncertain differentiation, benign tumors like intramuscular myxomas, thymomas, or malignant like synovial sarcoma, epithelioid sarcoma, clear cell sarcomas of the soft tissue. The aim and objective of this paper is to describe the MRI findings of various soft tissue sarcomas. The material and methods, it's a it is a retrospective cross-sectional evaluation of MRI features in patients with various soft tissue sarcomas who came to the Department of Radio Diagnosis in Krishna Institute of Medical Science, Karat, from October 2021 to April 2022. MR was done for these patients on Siemens 1.5 Tesla MRI with contrast sequences and other specific sequences as and when seemed appropriate. Coming to the first soft tissue sarcoma that we'll be discussing, that is in hemangioma, they are characterized under benign vascular lesions, the other entity being vascular malformations. They are common tumors in infancy and childhood that can occur in any age group. Clinically, hemangiomas can manifest with bluish skin discoloration and a history of size fluctuation. Occasionally, pain may occur following exercise owing to the shunting of blood flow away from the surrounding tissue into the hemangioma. The imaging features on plain radiograph the hemangioma usually shows multiple phlebolites on USG, complex mass with anechoic channels with phlebolites and acoustic shadowing, CT, poorly defined lesion with attenuation similar to muscle and significant post-contrast enhancement and phlebolites are noted. On MRI, the lesion is T1 iso to hyper intense to muscle. On T2, it's hyper intense in area with vascular components and post-contrast, it shows prominent post-contrast enhancement. We'll be discussing a case of a 21-year-old man who came with complaints of uh, swelling over his left foot. Uh, 
there are coronal T1 and uh, post contrast images and axial T1 GRE and post contrast images provided. A well, we can see a well defined altered signal intensity lobulated area in the intermuscular plane of plantar aspect of the left foot at the region of the first metatarsopharyngeal joint extending anteriorly surrounding the interphalangeal joint. Uh, the lesion is hyperintense on T1, hyperintense on T2 and PDFS, showing fluid fluid level in T2. There's no evidence of diffusion restriction. Patchy heterogeneous post contrast enhancement was noted. And a few flow voids were noted in the lesion. Pressure erosion cortices of the first metatarsal and distal end of the first proximal phalanx is noted with altered sigmoid marrow intensity in the form of PDFS hyperintense signal. Uh, later on, this case was biopsy proven to be a soft tissue hemangioma. Peripheral nerve sheet tumors, classified separately as neurogenic tumors by WHO. Benign peripheral nerve sheet tumors include schwannomas and neurofibromas. Benign Peripheral nerve sheet tumors are typically iso-intense to muscle on T1 and slightly hyper-intense to fat on T2, but are non-specific in terms of their signal intensity. Schwannomas and neurofibromas can be difficult to distinguish from each other at imaging. Either tumor can appear as a well-defined, smooth border, fusiform mass that is aligned along the nerve. Occasionally on MR images, a schwannoma can be distinguished from a neurofibroma by its location related to the nerve. The nerve is eccentric to the mass, although within the capsule is a schwannoma, and rather than being central or obliterated by a mass, which is seen in neurofibromas. Uh, discussing a case of a 43-year-old male who complains of pain and swelling over the right elbow, uh, the images provided are actual PDFS, T2 weighted, GRE images, and diffusion restriction images, and Sajayake post contrast and angio images. In the case of a 43 year old male, we can see a well defined, well encapsulated solid lesion in proximal forearm at the volar aspect just below the elbow in relation with the median nerve located eccentrically. A thin rim of T1 hyperintensity was noted at the proximal and distal poles of the lesion, representing a layer of fat, the split fat sign. The lesion appears iso to hypointense on T1, heterogeneously hypointense on T2 and PDFS, with central hypointensity on T2 weighted images. Post contrast shows heterogeneous enhancement, and the lesion shows no diffusion restriction or blooming on medic sequences. Coming to the third soft tissue tumor, synovial sarcomas, the affect the extremities, particularly around the knee, and in majority of the cases. Despite of the name of the lesion, it does not arise from the synovium. It is extra articular in location, being near the knee joint. Adolescents and young adults, around 15 to 40 years of age, are most often affected does not arise from the synovium and is seen arising most commonly surrounding the knee. CT uh, features, it shows an ill-defined mass with calcification, hemorrhage within the lesion. However, findings are not specific. MRI is the modality of choice. However, imaging findings are not specific. T1, we usually see an iso to hyper intense mass to the muscles. <clears throat> T2, mostly hyper intense. And post contrast, we see enhancement, usually prominent, can be diffuse, heterogeneous, or peripheral. Imaging findings that may be useful in diagnosis of synovial sarcoma include. Seen in T2 weighted images are calcification, hemorrhage, and fluid fluid levels. Triple signal areas of high, low, and iso intensity compared to fat on T2 weighted images 
are seen, which could indicate the cystic hemorrhagic fibrotic and calcification within the region. Bone erosion or invasion may be noted. Discussing a case of a 38 year old male that complains of swelling and pain over the knee. Uh, we can see a well-defined, lobulated, mixed solid cystic mass lesion in the intramuscular plane along the medial aspect of right leg extending into the thigh and crossing the knee joint. Signal characteristic being P1 weighted heterogeneously slightly hyperintense with few bright hyperintense areas within, slightly the proteinaceous content due to old knowledge. On PDFS, on PD and medic sequences, it is heterogeneously hyperintense with multiple cystic areas showing fluid blood levels within. Looming in dependent portion of cysts on medic sequences is noted. Perilesional edema noted in the form of PDFS hyperintensity. On diffusion weighted images, the solid component shows areas of diffusion restriction. And on post contrast, there is heterogeneous enhancement with few non enhancing areas within. The abdomyosarcoma is a malignant tumor with skeletal muscle cell uh, morphology, is one of the tumors of muscular origin. In general, they are found in young patients less than 45 years of age, with 65% diagnosed under the age of 10 years. Males are more uh, affected than females on ultrasound. The lesion is heterogeneous, well-defined, irregular mass of low to medium epogenicity. CT, it shows soft tissue density, some enhancement with contrast, and adjacent bone destruction is seen in 20% of the cases. MRI signal characteristics include its P1 low to intermediate intensity, iso-intense to adjacent muscle, T2 hyper-intense, Prominent flow voids may be seen, particularly in extremity lesions. On post contrast images, it shows considerable enhancement. Embryologic, embryonal uh, rhabdomyosarcomas tend to be homogeneous, whereas alveolar and pleomorphic types are frequently have more areas of necrosis. The latter is associated with ring like enhancement. Discussing a case. Uh, in a biopsy proven case of rhabdomyosarcoma of a 40 year old male who came with the history of fall, pain, and swelling over the left knee, we can see abnormal uh, marrow infiltrative lesion in the lower end of the femur in the metaphyseal diaphyseal location with permeated type of bone destruction and periosteal reaction and large extra osseous soft tissue all in. This results in displaced horizontal fracture of the distal shaft of femur at the epiphysis with displacement of the distal fracture fragment posteriorly and femurally, which signifies a pathological fracture. It, ex it exhibits intermediate signal in P1 weighted and heterogeneously hyperintense signal in PDFS and P2 weighted sequences. PDFS hyperintensity noted in biceps femoris, vastus lateralis, and medialis, which um, are suggestive of muscle hematomas. Subcutaneous and intermuscular edema is seen around the knee joint. Moderate to severe joint effusion extending to the suprapatellar bursa is also noted. Ten cases were examined, out of which three were of soft tissue hemangiomas three of peripheral nerve sheath tumors, two of synovial sarcomas, and two of rhabdomyosarcomas, of which one of each has been discussed in this paper. In conclusion, 10 cases were segregated, from which different imaging features based on various sequences of T1, T2 flare were seen, and gradient sequences like hemophase, SWI were taken into consideration and their imaging characteristics were mentioned in the paper. 
these are the reference papers from which these points have been taken. Thank you.